Today is something that I very much enjoy doing. I'm talking to a country that is my second favorite country after my homeland in the U.S. in the world. I'm talking to a country that I believe in your future, that you will be the fastest growing economy in the world over the next decade, that, that you will increase the average income of all of your population faster than any other country in the world as well, and that you will move from what many in the world viewed as a slow follower to a very, very fast leader. Uh, I think technology will enable this change to your society. And it used to be we thought as technology separate than other businesses, such as manufacturing or healthcare or government. Technology will be completely included in everything you do in your lives as citizens or as governments. And every company, every organization will become a digital technology company in its approach. Uh, today, I'd like to share with you perhaps a unique perspective of how this can and should evolve, in my opinion, in India. And if you agree with everything I say, I will fail. I think a key element of that is how do you do your startup economy? In job creation around the world and in income creation and inclusion, uh, regardless of gender or geographic location or religion, uh, the startups will be the primary job creator. The large companies in total, whether it's in India, uh, in the U.S. or in Europe will not add headcount because of automation and digitization. The small companies will move faster on innovation, as the minister said earlier, uh, in terms of direction. And so if you really want to look at a country's future, you look at how they're positioning themselves for the future with AI, 5G, uh, semiconductors, as the minister said earlier, but you want to look at how they can position themselves from a startup perspective. And if you see how well their startups are growing and how creative they are, as every startup and every industry will have a large technology component part, you can predict the future. Many people say that I see around corners and are able to see things perhaps earlier than others, whether it was betting on India uh, at a time that very few other companies would do. And I made it my second world headquarters uh, you know, several decades ago when I was at Cisco. Uh, the ability to perhaps see transitions in the industry in terms of the internet changing the way that you work, live, learn, and play. Uh, in 1990, when people didn't think of the internet as anything except a way of connecting zeros and ones with techies around the world. Uh, the ability to capture transitions when voice started to go over the internet, it meant tech connectivity will move to video and will move to data, and that voice would become free for the service providers. And the ability when you see problems, whether it's a 2001 dot-com bubble uh, or the 2008 Great Recession, seeing those ahead of time and positioning your country, your companies to navigate through them. And I'll come back to that in a moment because I will share with you my views on some economic challenges that may very well be coming our, our way from a global perspective. And then it's seen in 2011, the digital world very clearly being the future and that semi uh, uh, cyber security would become a key element of that and talking about that at the World Economic Forum in 2015. But my current focus, very candidly, is about the next generation of, of technology as the cloud moves to the edge. And as you see the technologies that we've all alluded to earlier, where you go from what was the thousand devices connected to the internet when Cisco is formed to 500 billion devices connected to the internet uh, by 2025. When you see an example where India by 2023 will be connected with 650 million of your citizens, and it needs to be able to connect all of them over time, but a vision by your government on what could occur here. Uh, when you want to look at health of a country and you don't think about the next quarter or even the next year or two, watch the number of startups and then watch the number of startups that become unicorns. And it isn't the financial success of the unicorns that's so important. It's the indication of future job creation. Job creation, 90% of it occurs after you become a unicorn or after you go public. So if you look at your health of your future job creation engine that your great institutions like your IITs are positioning your students for, you have an indication of what the future can hold. India is the fastest growing country in the world in unicorns. You go back five years ago, there were none. You begin to think about it, you're now approaching 100 unicorns in terms of the opportunity. And you have the best coordination, in my opinion, by far in the world, 
between a vision of startups, a free enterprise system in a democracy, a vision of a digital India, a digital country uh, that is coming together in a way that I think can control your destiny where India can become the number one fastest growing economy in the world for a decade and beyond and one that is very, very inclusive. But it requires business and government and academia and people such as attending this conference to work together in a way that perhaps they've not done before. I would give the government extremely high grades versus the counterparts around the world with the Digital India strategy. And I think what Prime Minister Modi has done has been so effective. Uh, I'm honored to be the chairman of the U.S.-India Strategic Partnership Forum. I personally believe strongly the most important relationships between any two countries in the world is between the U.S. and India. And that we're working together, both in terms of large companies, small companies, job creation, challenges that we face with COVID, where we help each other through those together, we can have, I think, a benefit for every person in society. Now, on to another issue. I personally uh, am concerned that we are going to see an economic slowdown this year. I think you're seeing that at different paces around the world. India is continuing to run very, very strong. Uh, but we're all connected. And for the first time in 40 years, at least in the U.S., uh, we're beginning to see inflation at an unbelievable rate uh, for that. And we haven't experienced that, and navigating through it will be challenging. Uh, the geopolitical issues with Russia and the Ukraine, uh, with China, et cetera, I think also uh, introduce a series of complexities. The central banks, the Federal Reserve in the U.S., will see how well they can or cannot uh, bring us in for a soft landing. Uh, there's more challenges going on that I've seen in my lifetime at one time, and I'd be happy if we didn't get a soft landing in the U.S., but a, a bumpy landing like the one pilot who had never flown a plane landed it in Florida the other day. Uh, he, he got out safe and walked away from it. The global supply chain is a huge challenge for the future of the economy, uh, and it is slowing down businesses everywhere in the world. Uh, you see that in retail sales and using the U.S. as an example. Uh, you see it uh, also in automotive manufacturing around the world. Uh, you see it uh, in terms of technology companies not meeting their objectives or the manufacturing companies not able to run their capacity at, at full speed. Our leaders have not seen this downturn before, and it's been 12 years. And while that sounds like a short time, it is really very fast because most of the leaders were not in a leadership position by the last economic downturn. So I think we're going to head for some bumps. I hope I'm wrong on that. But I will share with the audience that I did call 2001 saying it is a 100-year flood as it occurred and called the Great Recession in 2008 and 2009 and 2007 based upon what I was seeing out of the financial industry. So some advice in terms of how do you handle downturn, uh, it's actually your chance to break away. It's your ability to stay focused on what your North Star is, what your opportunity is in the future. And this is true of whether you're a country or whether you're a startup or a government. Uh, you take a look at how much of the opportunities and challenges were created by the macro environment, and you have to deal with those with a multi-phase plan. And you have to look at what perhaps you as a company, whether you're a startup or a bigger company, need to do differently. You outline what are the five to six major platforms you're going to do, ranging from cash preservation uh, to how you interface to your employees, to how you change to your customers, to where you make your bets, and you have to be very selective on it. You communicate that effectively to your employees, to your investors, uh, to the media in terms of where do you go. And then you paint the picture of what you're going to look like when you come out of it. Almost all great tech companies were a product of economic slowdown, and they broke away during that slowdown. So while we all hope in this room that that does not happen, uh, it is one that I think we need to realize is a possibility. And rather than looking at it as a negative, my parents of both doctors taught me how to deal with it in a, a way of uh, realizing Seeing, deal with the world the way it is, not the way you wish it was. And so if you have to make changes, you make them once, you make them very quickly. Uh, this will determine what future winners are like. 
I'm a huge believer that technology would change the world in a large way for the good. I think it gives us a chance to make a much more inclusive society across all 29 states in India and gives us a chance to bring that capability to all 1.3 billion people in your country that I love. India is the best position in the world to lead in this next decade. I think you've moved from what I said earlier of a slow follower to a very fast leader. If I were betting on one country in Asia to lead, I'd bet on India. If I were betting on two countries to lead, I've often said it, I'd bet on India twice. I think your democracy, your education system, your government leadership, and a huge amount of the credit goes directly to Prime Minister Modi and his Digital India plan has positioned your country for the growth for the next five and ten years, regardless of the economic bumps along the way. As everything in society goes digital, we need to realize that so will be job creation, so will be inclusion, and we've got to address both the connectivity, the education, and we have to make it inclusive of all geographic regions uh, as we do so. The speed of change, the new normal, the minister alluded to it earlier. The internet changed over 30 years, changing the way we work, live, learn, and play. The service provider market changed over 20 in terms of moving from primarily voice connectivity to data and to video. The changes we see now with the cloud moving to the edge, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, will change business models in three to five years. And I think that speed of change will be the new normal. I would challenge the group and the audience. I, I love your country. I believe very much in the future. I believe that there are huge advantages between the U.S. and India being even closer together, and I hope we achieve that because that will benefit uh, people and uh, businesses in both countries very well. But I want you to kind of challenge you to dream even bigger. I like the way you've outlined a very aggressive plan for the next five years. I think you can dream even bigger, and I think there's a high probability that India will be the model that other people look to a decade from now to say we need to follow what India did during the uh, 2020 to 2030 time period. So I thank you for the time today. It's an honor to be back uh, in a country that I love and a people that I'm honored to be a part of. Have a great session.